everyone, welcome to Buckle Up Podcast. I'm Natalia Earl and I'm a certified business and life coach that loves talking to people. I'm fascinated by humans and how our brain works. What is it that makes a decision good or bad and how does that decision ultimately shape our path and destiny? Everyone loves to talk about success, but what about the flip side? How about adversity? Failure is such a big and often necessary part of life and it's simply unavoidable. So I invite you to join me on this inspiring, honest, unpolished interview show with breathtakingly real conversations that go deep on setbacks and hardships that are part of the puzzle that ultimately lead to growth, discovery of inner greatness, and what makes us resilient. Grab your helmet and buckle up, people. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but what a ride it will be. In this educational episode, we are back with part two with Aaron Swenson, who has worked in the mortgage business for over 21 years. After living in Minnesota most of his life, Aaron made a life-changing decision by moving to South Florida about eight years ago. He currently runs his own mortgage office and is licensed in multiple states. His biggest passion is to help and serve others. Aaron went from barely graduating high school to now being an entrepreneur by sitting down and learning the trade of highly successful people. The one thing that he learned quickly was that in life you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just replicate what successful people do. He taught himself how to let your money do the work for you by trading and investing in the market. As a man of many passions, he sponsors multiple children and families living in poverty. You know, is it also a good time right now to refinance a house? Oh my God, the interest rates are the lowest they've been since 2008. I mean, if people are not taking advantage of refinancing, it is a huge mistake because this market is not, it's, it's not a matter of if the interest rates are going to go up. It's a matter of when. And you don't know when, right? Mm-hmm. And people think they have all this time, like, oh, you know what? I'm going to wait for them to go down a little bit lower. I mean, how much lower do you want? You know, when my mom bought her house, it was 18.5%, right? I mean, if you remember in 2002, the boom that came with the refi was at five and a quarter, right? Everyone's like, oh my God, rates drop a little six. It's five and a quarter. I can't wait to refinance. Then in 2008, they would then drop to four and a quarter right? People are like, oh my gosh, this has got to be the first time in history that it dropped down into the fours, right? Then in 2008, or uh, in now in our current market, it's now into the threes, right? Mm. Now we're in the low threes. And these are the lowest interest rates. Like at some point, even December of last year, they were in the twos, twos. Yeah. You can't even get a car payment in the two. But the, the thing that people get deceived with, Nat, is on this is that People, these advertisements that you see online is exactly what it is, an advertisement. And this drives me crazy when I see so many people get screwed over on this, is people give them a 2.75 or a 2.625 or a 2.875 on a 30-year fixed. It doesn't exist. But, and you know what they do is they, on their closing cost statement, they will charge them discount points, right? Hoping that you don't see it, right? Because- People have blinders on and all they look at is that interest rate. Think about it. Like all they're doing is looking at that interest rate. They have no idea because on a refinance, you know, you don't come up with anything out of your own pocket. Everything's rolled into the loan, right? So you have these blinders on that. All you're doing is I, you, can you do anything better than 2.75? No, that's the best we can do. In the meantime, the guy's charging you 1.5% for the interest rate. I get this all the time when people send me their closing disclosure. I said, send me your closing disclosure. Let me look at it. I look at the closing disclosure. I said, do you realize this guy's charging you $9,000 for that interest rate? $9,000 for that interest rate. Do you realize that? Because they think that interest rates is the only thing that sells them on doing that mortgage. But I'll tell you hundred percent is work with somebody you can trust, work with somebody that looks out for your best interest. And it's never about the interest rate. I promise you. But honestly, like uh, I started using credit cards that only give you something back in return, right? Same. But the smartest thing that you can do is when you charge on that card, and this is going back to what we were talking about earlier about discipline, right? 
if you can't afford to pay for it, you don't charge it, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're going to charge on it, take the money out of your personal account and transfer it into your credit card account, right? Right now, as soon as you charge on it or at the end of the night, you take it or if you want to do it weekly, you figure out how much did I charge on the card this week and I need to transfer that money in the credit card account because credit card companies hate people like me and you because sure. they, they do. You pay them off every month. They're like, God, every month this guy gets these rewards. He gets to do take <laughs> money from us and we don't get anything from them because yeah. the guy, we're not collecting any interest on them and we don't charge them an annual fee. In the meantime, we're just like reaping all the benefits because we pay them off every month. Mm -hmm. But it's very simple. If you set up that credit card account, you only use it to pay your credit cards. That's it. It's not a reserve account to go in in case your checking account runs low. You set yourself on a budget and you say, you know what? If you only have $200 left in your personal checking account, too bad. That's be Well, then you're going to have to wait for when your credit cards bills do and take that money and put it towards your credit cards. And you'll always pay them off and then you don't get yourself in credit card debt. It's one of the smartest things you can do. You, you can separate. And the beautiful thing with that is you can, you don't tie your personal finances into your credit card finances. And the thing is, is that by you doing that, then you can separate the two and know, oh, that's right. I have $2,000 sitting in my credit card. So I don't have to worry about having the money in my personal account. And you really know how much you really have in your personal account, right? Right. Because all the other money's already been transferred out to the other account. Yeah. So it's,